So nice to see everybody. Nice to see people who have, um, oh, there's the sheet, who have also been with us for our webinars uh, last week, our 101 and our Sheets webinar. So nice to have you back if you're a first time webinar attendee. Uh, we also welcome you. Happy to have you join us. And I that um, I'll get started, even though there are still some people who are joining, they can join and we'll begin. Um, okay. So I want to introduce myself. I'm Rachel Buckman, um, Senior Education Associate at Safaria. And, um, and Lauren Berman is with me. He is the Outreach and Engagement Associate. Um, during the course of our webinar, if you have questions, I'd ask you to put them in the chat. We're gonna be stopping along the way and, um, and we'll answer the questions that went with the section previously. We'll hold off on questions perhaps that are coming up. Lauren knows which quest, what we're gonna be covering. So he'll hold off on answering the questions of things that are coming up. Um, we will get to all of your questions by the end. So, um, so you can write those questions. We'd like you to look at the screen and, and travel along with us. This is the deep dive webinar for Safaria. And um, this is sort of part two or, or the, the deeper part of the Safaria 101 uh, webinar. So if you've been to that one, great. If not, and you're already a, a pretty familiar with Safaria, that's wonderful. Um, hopefully everybody will get something new out of today's webinar. So we are the people of the book and for thousands of years, our culture, our traditions, and our values have been transmitted through our texts. From an oral tradition to handwritten scrolls to a vast corpus of printed books, each new medium democratized knowledge and brought more people into the great Jewish conversation. This generation, our generation is charged with shepherding our texts from print to digital in a way that it can expand their reach and impact in new and unprecedented ways. And Safaria is proud to be doing this in a really big way. The Safaria Library currently consists of over 5,000 index records that are linked together with almost 2.8 million intertextual links, which we'll talk about in the course of this webinar. Today's webinar is called a deep dive because we're gonna dive into Safaria's vast library and see what wonderful discoveries we can make. Whereas in the olden days, which for many of us was just a little while ago, we wandered through library stacks to find the treasures. Today with Safaria, we can do it even better, the click of a mouse, which lets us follow along and participate in the conversations that have been going on for thousands of years. Today's webinar will be a deeper dive into the Safaria library than you might have experienced in the Safaria 101 webinar, and it'll give you the tools to swim around and make your own wonderful discoveries. I'm going to be working on the website. Uh, most of what I'm doing can also be done on the app, although it might look a little different. When there's a major difference between the app and the website, I'll point it out. So we're going to start with a review from the base. <coughs> I think all of you uh, probably know, and that's the search bar. Um, and when you're in the English website, it's in the top left. There's also, you can do this all in Hebrew, then it would be in the top right. Um, so I'm going to put in a text. Let's say I would like to look up I would like to open up Pirkei Avot. So I can type it. Um, I could type it uh, in English. This is in transliteration. I could type it. I could say, well, it's ethics of, of the fathers. You can see the drop down there. I could also type it in Hebrew. I could, if my, if my computer, if I type Hebrew, I can do Pirkei Avot that way. If I don't type in Hebrew, there is a keyboard in the search bar and I can click on that and it will give me a Hebrew, uh, it will give me a Hebrew uh, keyboard. So I'm gonna put Pirkei Avot and um, you'll notice that there's a drop down menu and there are different icons here. Um, there are icons, which um, a book means that it's a book. Um, a hashtag means it's a topic page, which we talked about in Safaria 101. I will also talk about in this webinar, a pile of sheets is a collection, which is a collection of sheets. So it's a pile of sheets. Um, there's another icon, which is a quill, and that is an author. So we're gonna click on Pirkei Avot. 
and it takes us to the light to the table of contents for peer chaos vote, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but I'm going to open up to the beginning. And here we are at peer chaos vote. Um, the first, the first mission of peer chaos vote. Um, so as we've talked before, the key to Safari library is I click on it and on the side, I get this resource panel um, on the app, it would be on the bottom. Um, and it gives me all kinds of information. What we're gonna do during this webinar is we're gonna go through everything. So I went through some of the things in the 101 webinar. Those I'll, I'll do less, but I'll show you in, this, in the framework of, of everything on the, on the side, everything in the resource panel, because this is where all the action is. So we have the main text in the middle and you all know with the A Aleph button, you can change how you view it, Hebrew, English, bi bilingual. Um, and on the side, under related text, this is the digitization part of it. We have every place in the Safari library that is connected, every text that is connected to our text here, which is the first Mishnah of Pirkei Avot. So we have commentaries and it tells you how many connections we have, 122 comments on this one Mishnah, uh, two places in Tanakh, five in Talmud. And if I click on more, I see all of the categories in our library and all of the places that this Mishnah is in some way connected. Um, as you can see, you right away jump into this whole conversation. It's based on maybe something from Tanakh. It goes to Mishnah and Talmud and commentaries on it and Jewish thought and Kabbalah. And all of the Jewish texts are in conversation with each other. And as opposed to standing in front of, a shelf, of shelves in a library where a person might not know which book to take down or how to open it up, we do it with clicks, uh, which is, opens up a world for a whole lot of people um, who, who aren't as able to, to do it the other way, which is most of us. Um, so what I do is I then click on, um, like here I click on the commentary and I can see um, they're marked with English if they have a complete English commentary, they, uh, English translation, excuse me. They don't, if they don't, then um, either they don't have any English or it could be hit or miss. Um, so if you're looking only for an English translation, you might wanna stick with the ones that are marked with the EN. So here, if you look at this, I can find lots of texts that I might never have known to open before. I could pick Rabbeinu Yona. I don't even know what Rabbeinu Yona is. I can click on it. And now I have it not in its full form, but I can look at it here, skim it. If I'd like to open it, I click open. And now it's in its full form. I can click on Rabbeinu Yona, his, his uh, commentary on Pirkei Avot. If I click on it, now I get another resource panel. And this one is about the commentary Rabbeinu Yona. So, um, and I can keep going and uh, keep going as many panels as I want. On the app, I can only open one at a time. And that's clearly just a issue of the size of your screen on a phone. Um, so the first thing, which is really, really important is about this text. We used to have it lower down. Some of you might notice that we've changed the look of the resource panel, which we think makes it a lot easier for people to find things. And we've moved about this text to the top because we really feel that it's so important that people know what it is that they're reading. And there is a ton of information here, which I'd like to show you. So here we have the name of the text, which is Rabbeinu Yona on Pirkei Avot. It tells me the name of the author. Now, his name is Yona, but who is he? So there is his name, Rabbeinu Yona of Gerondi. I still might not know who he is. I can click on his name and it takes me to his, um, his author page. So here I have his name. I have a short biography of him. I have all of the works of his that are on Safaria and they're all linked. So I could just jump to another one. On the side, it tells me when he lived. I have links to, if I wanna learn more about him, I have links to Wikip his Wikipedia article, his article in Jewish um, encyclopedia. And in this case, we know who his cousins are. Oh, he was a cousin of the Ramban. And he was also a student of the Ramban. So that's kind of nice. So I've just learned a whole bunch of information about this book that I might not have known previously. So, um, so that's on the top. 
the name of the author, a little background on the, on the book. This is about the book, tells me that it's a commentary um, and so a little information. Now I'd like to know, but what version am I looking at? What is this text and who translated it? Those are two big questions that people are always interested in. So first, so this will tell you your current version. So even when there are other choices on the top, it has the current version. This is the one we're looking at. It tells us it's from Berlin, 1848. It tells us if I can make this a little bigger so maybe you can see it. It tells you that we got it from the National Library of Israel. It was digitized by Safaria. And then it tells us the license, which is very important. It's in the public domain. And this uh, matters because if you want to use this and reuse it for something that you are making, it's allowed, it's in the public domain. If I click on whatever the license is, there are different licenses. We'll look at a few during this webinar. If I click on it, it will give me an explanation of what does it mean. This one goes to um, a Wikipedia page. This will explain to me what I can do with the public domain uh, text. Uh, but other ones, uh, I'll show you another example later that are other licenses and I'll show you how you find out how you can use those. The current translation on this is a Safari community translation. The overwhelming majority of our translations are not Safari community translations. Most of them are translations that were done, that were published, that were written by a translator. Um, uh, but we also have community translations where any registered Safari user can add a translation. Um, these are in the public domain. Uh, once you agree to put it, it can be shared and, and, and uh, used in any way. Um, also, another, if you, let's say you open it up and you say, this is a community, Safari community translation, and I don't think they translated that word properly. Um, you as a Safari user, if you're logged in, you can go in and um, edit the translation, which I'll show you how to do later. If you click on revision history, you'll see who has, it'll go in with your name so someone can see who added that translation. We're all about transparency here. So um, if you wanna use a Safari translation, that's fine. If you wanna, if you know, the important part is that you know where the translation came from. Um, so, so that's about this text. Um, I wanna show you another one cause I wanna show you a different license. So we're gonna open it up again and we're gonna go into commentary. And this time I'm gonna click on English explanation of Mishnah and I'm gonna, oh, by the way, you notice that if I wanna go back to Rabbeinu Yona, I don't have to go back to the beginning. I can just switch that way. I'm gonna open up this one uh, in full and again, go to the about this text. And here, this is an explanation of Pirkei Avot. The author is Joshua Culp, he is, um, you can see he composed this recently. Um, it's a contemporary user-friendly explanation of the Mishnah. You can read about um, Dr. Culp if you click on his author page, but I wanna show you his license is different. His license, it says CC BY. So CC stands for Creative Commons and Creative Commons is an organization that has unified or, or kind of uh, defined what the, um, licenses are. And so if somebody is putting something out there, they can choose which license they want. And as the user, it's great if you just click on it, it goes to their website, they explain what you're allowed to do with it. So a CC BY, you are free to share, to copy and redistribute in any medium or, for, or forum. You can adapt it, you can remix it, transform it, build upon it. Under the following terms, you have to give attribution and it tells you how to give the attribution. In this case, you don't give the attribution to Safaria, you give it to the author of the, of the work. So you can always find out by clicking on their CC by, their CC, we, we don't, there's some that are very, very specific, very closed. We do not like to use those. So ours are generally quite open. You just wanna make sure if you have to give attribution or sometimes some can't be used for commercial purposes. This one could be you could use this um, in a book that you are then selling, but you would have to give attribution to, and you would write Mishnah Yomit by Dr. Joshua Kolb. Um, so this is all very important. And we saw an author page. I'm gonna show you one more thing about learning about the text. Another place that you find how to, how to learn about the text 
And this is going to be changing a little bit, but all of the pieces will still be there. We are having coming up, um, there will be some changes in the look, but basically the functionality will be the same. So if I click on the name of the book in the header, I open the table of contents and you saw that before. It tells me the category, the name of the book, a little bit about the book. Here is the same information that we had about Dr. Culp. We have the license, we have the revision history. Um, this is a great way to navigate. We can uh, jump around. It tells me all of my versions, and but the important thing that I wanna show you here that's not in the other places is how to download the text. So if you'd like to download it, you first choose your version settings. So what is it that you want to download? Do you want a Hebrew English? Do you want just the Hebrew? Do you want just the English? You pick what it is that you want and the file format. And there are four different um, formats. Um, PDF is not one of our formats. So if you wanted a PDF, you would need to download to something else and then you yourself would have to change it into a PDF. And you would, you would choose your things and then you would click download and you would download the text to your computer. Um, so that's the table of contents, also great places to find out about the texts. Um, um, I am gonna keep going unless, Lauren, you feel that we should stop there, um, but I was planning on going a little bit more. What do you think, Lauren? Oh, okay. So maybe he's not hearing us. I'm going to keep going. No, so keep going. I was making a uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. I'm, I'm on a roll. I could keep going. Okay. We've looked at about this text. We looked a little bit at related text. This we did a lot in the 101. Um, you click more. You have all of the categories. Really, I invite you all to click around, discover new texts. Um, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Now we're gonna do, and then I'll take a break again. So if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. I'll get to them at the next break, but I'm going to do this whole resources section in order, except for one jump. So sometimes we have several translations of a, te of a text and you get to choose. Again, we are all about you personalizing it, you choosing what you want to see. We have a large variety, just like if you're walking in a library, there are books on the shelf that you might not want. There are books on the shelves that you do want. Um, we are the same way. And it's just really important for us that you know what the books are, what the choices are, and for you to know what it is that you're looking at. So if I click on translations, I see the current translation. So I know this is what I'm looking at. The, the translation is Mishnah Yomi by Dr. Joshua Culp. Great. But I might want a different translation and I have three other choices. I have the open Mishnah and I click, click on that and it will switch to, the, to that translation. I have the Safari community translation. I can click to that. And I have the Mishnah with Avadji Bartanura by Rabbi Shraga Silverstein. And I have that one. So I'll just show you what it looks like. I click select translation and now it has switched to a different translation. I can also, it will jump to all English but I can change it. And now you can see it says current translation. If I wanna change it back, it's gonna go back. It's gonna switch it all to English. Um, and there it is. And I chose the translation that I want. Sometimes we have a lot of translations, sometimes we don't. Uh, we have the most translations also with additional languages in, in the Torah. So um, not even the whole Tanakh, but in the Torah. And we have many languages, um, we have a Yiddish, translation of the Chumash of the Torah. We have, I think, Farsi, we have Russian, we have all kinds of languages. We have French, so, um, so you can play around with those. Um, so translations, really important. Um, that's the top one on resources. Next is sheets, which I'm not gonna talk about a lot because we talk about that in both the sheets and in the 101 um, webinars. But here are all of the sheets, all of the public sheets that have used this text. So right now I'm on, I'm on uh, the third Mishnah in, the, in uh, the first chapter of Pirkei Avot. So all of these sheets have used this text in their sheets. So this is a great way. I'm reading this and I'm wondering, I wonder what somebody did with this. I wonder what someone has learned. I wonder what I could learn from this. And I can click on anything that interests me and I can learn something. Sometimes they're 
more completely written out. Sometimes it's just a bunch of other sources that might be interesting to put together with this one. So that's under sheets. The next is web pages, which I also, um, I'm gonna go back to, I think that first Mishnah, um, and I'm gonna go to the web pages. And, um, and here, these are websites that link to Safari and they, on their pages, if they cite something, you can see Safari and on our text, if, we, if they've written something, you can see it. So for instance, let's say I click on Rabbi Sachs's website and I see that he's written several articles, Divrei Torah, whatever they may be, that, um, that use this, my, my original text that I'm interested in. So I click on it and I go to his website. Um, so in, his, in this case, you could hear a recording um, of, of the, his Devar Torah, and you can see that um, this is how it's linked to us. If I click on the, site, the source, then you can, you can see it in Safari and you could click re read more and you would go right into our library, which is nice because sometimes when someone's writing a Devar Torah, they just put a little fragment of the text and you might wanna see it in the whole thing. But also you can see here, um, we were in, let's see, we were looking at Mishnah Avot 1.1. And so he put that into his uh, Dvar Torah and, and there it is. So you can look at web pages also. This is, they become part of the library, which just increases the library that much more because you have the original text and you also have contemporary writers who are using these texts to to make meaning for all of us. So um, you can take your favorites. Some of them are more basic. Some of them are higher level. You know, yeah, maybe you'd need a little more um, background. Uh, we basically have everything from all different uh, parts of the beautiful Jewish umbrella of, uh, of thinkers. So you can find what it is that you like. Um, after web pages, after web pages, I'm gonna skip over topics for a second. We have manuscripts. Manuscripts are for Tanakh. They are for Mishnah and Talmud. And this is very new and very exciting. And for Talmud, we have three different manuscripts. For Mishnah, we have these two. So now I can click on the manuscript. I can make it bigger. And I can see here is our Mishnah right here. And I can see it in a manuscript. Um, in the Talmud manuscripts, there's three different ones, three different time periods, and you can see the development. Um, Talmud wasn't always written the way we're used to in a Vilna Shas in the traditional um, way. We have two earlier, we have the Vilna Shas, and then we have the modernized, um, digitized on, our, on ours. I'm gonna show you what it looks like um, in, the, in the Tanakh because, in the Torah actually, I'm gonna show you because, um, I mean, I just made this too big. Okay, because uh, I wanna show you something else that's in the sidebar, but only for Torah texts. So um, let's open up, I'm gonna put it in Hebrew and go on the side. And first I'll show you the manuscript. We use the Leningrad Codex for our, our text. And um, so you can open it up and you can actually look at it, which is pretty exciting. Um, and actually you could look up the Leningrad Codex and then you could find out even how exciting that is that you get to see it on Safari. The other thing for, for the Torah readings is that every single verse of the Torah, you can click on Torah readings on the side and you'll get a recording of a person chanting that verse. So if I were to click on it, I'm not gonna do it now because I don't have it set so that you'll hear me, that you'll hear it, but um, it would play a person chanting that verse. So that is for Torah readings, only Torah readings. Now I'm gonna go back to, um, I wanna go back to Pirkei Avot because I wanna show you something else nice. You can also do, uh, open things up this way by the library page. So here we are back at the text we were looking at before on Pirkei Avot and I open on the side. And you'll notice that there are 20 topics pages connected to this very famous first Mishnah in Pirkei Avot. I don't know that I've seen one that has more than 20, but uh, maybe you'll find one. 
So topics pages are pages, we have thousands of these um, on a certain subject. It gives us, I'll show you in a second, it gives us sources, it gives us sheets um, that, that pertain to that subject. And this, um, this Mishnah is on 20 of those pages. So a page about pure Kavod in general, this one would be on there, learning, Torah, the written Torah and the oral Torah. So here I'd be saying, hmm, I read this and I wanna learn something even more about it. So here I'm gonna click on Mount Sinai because it mentions that the Torah was given at Sinai. And we have a page, a topics page on Mount Sinai. These are the ones that were preceded in the drop-down menu with a hashtag. And this is what a topics page looks like. It has sources that pertain to it. It has sheets that pertain to the subject. I can filter them. We did this all in the 101. Um, all the links are on the sheet that we gave you and we will send you the sheet with the recording probably tomorrow. Um, so you can go through all of these links and find things. We also have related topics to the side. Another, just to show you another topics page, how you can find it, you can put your topic in the search bar. So I'm gonna put Tisha B'Av because that's coming up and you'll notice that here's a hashtag that means it's the Tisha B'Av topics page. Here you can see also that we have a quill that's an author. And um, we also have this one, you don't see this so often, it's these four squares. That means it's a whole section, um, like there's a whole section of breast love texts. Um, we're gonna go to Tishabov, and now we have sources related to Tishabov, we have sheets related to Tishabov, and we have other related topics. Um, so now I've really given you a lot. So I am gonna stop, and um, Lauren, if we have questions, I'm happy to take them now. Great, thanks, Rachel. So I want to, uh, to highlight a couple of questions here, a few questions. Uh, one is a question <clears throat> about the, I would say it's, it's about the about info. So yes. maybe if you could uh, review with yeah. us, someone had asked, yep. what's the English source for Burke AFO? Is it JPS or all the English sources always the same source? If not, what are the sources? So that's one question. Okay, I'm going to do that one. Go if ahead. If you don't mind. So my, that question is, that's exactly what you're going to find out in about. They are not all the same. So like in Tanakh right now, our default text is the JPS. So if I open on that, you'll see that, um, that it tells you the current, well, it's the current translation. The translation is the JPS 1985. And it tells you that that's what the current translation is. The Hebrew text um, comes from Wikisource. And, um, and that tells you all the information about that. And we have alternate source versions because as you've seen, I think, before, um, if you click on the A Aleph button, you have choices about whether you want to see it with um, just the letters, with the vowels too, with the vowels and trump. And each one of those actually is a different version. So you can switch them here, but you also could switch it on the side. So I have, um, I have it with, I have this one. I have uh, Tanakh with Ta'amea Mikra, with the, the tropes. Um, I can switch it like that. Um, for the for the pure care vote, um, again, you just you have to look every single time on the. I mean, not every single time you look at it, but if you're asking that question, you're always going to go to the about this text, and it's going to tell you that the Hebrew came from Torah Met. It's Torah Torah Met Freeware. It's in the public domain. Oftentimes, that's where we'll get a text from. Um, because it's already digitized and it's in the public domain. So that's why we have many more Hebrew texts than we have English because these texts are ancient, so they could be in the public domain, whereas the translation could be within the last hundred years and they might still be under copyright. Um, but, and then again, it tells you, this tells you what your current translation is, but we also do have um, a different text. This would be the Hebrew text. And under translations, you would see alternate translations if we have them. So um, that is always your first place to go for any text that you're that you're looking at. Yes. Great. Thanks, Laura. Rachel. Other another two questions. Uh, one one is one is are the Dead Sea Scrolls included in the manuscripts? And another is does Audio Torah include Haftorah as well? Now, Audio Torah does not include Audio Torah right now. We 
you know, a lot of times it comes, it comes down to what we have access to. And if you notice, you know, things have to be, they have to be either in the public domain or they have to have a license, like a, um, they have to have a license that we can work with that we can make it useful to people that they can use. So, so, um, so we have, it's out there. I think it was Pocket Tower that did this and put it out there and made it accessible to people. So we've added it to, um, to Safari and the, that is just on Torah. If we had half Torah, I am sure that we would be more than happy to have it. So many times when people ask, and I'll show you how you can ask about text, really at this point, the overwhelming answer on asking about text is thank you for letting us know that you would like that text. It's good for us to know what you want because it helps us to know what we go after. But, um, but the reason that we don't have it is usually a copyright issue. Sometimes, and we work with publishers, um, we, can, we do not own the licenses ourselves, but we can give a financial um, help to, uh, for those that would like to make their license something that we can use on our site. So, um, so we're always adding new things, but um, it's, you know, it's, it's usually not a, it usually doesn't come down to like, oh, we, we didn't want to put it on. It never comes down to we didn't want to put it on because we want all Jewish texts. But um, often it's that we don't have, right now, we don't have a way to get it. The second question was about the Dead Sea Scrolls. We do not have the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, on our manuscripts. Our Tanakh manuscripts are, it's only the Leningrad Codex. The, the Talmud um, manuscripts are, uh, we can look at what they are quickly. Um, I want to get to the other stuff, but um, you can look uh, on the side and see the manuscripts. These are, oh, this one only has two. I thought usually we have three. So the Bomberg um, manuscript and the Ram Vilna, this is the Vilna Shas. And I believe that sometimes we have a third one earlier as well. And it's nice because you can kind of see how did it change as printing changed as people laid it out. And also it's interesting to know that the Vilna Shas was only uh, done in the 18, late 1800s, even though it's often seen like it's Torah Mi Sinai, that it came down with Moses at Sinai. Um, it is rather new. Um, it was an ingenious way to put all of this on a page. Now with the computer, we don't need to have it all on one page. We, can, we don't have to be constrained by the page. Um, so we feel that the way that we click and do all that we do um, actually allows people to learn maybe even, even better. Um, okay, I'm going to go on. Thank you for those questions and please continue to, um, to ask them and we'll stop again after the next section. I'm going to open to this week's Torah portion, which is Pinchas. You'll notice we have the calendar here. I'm going to click on Pinchas um, and I'm going to put it in Hebrew and English. I just like to look at it that way. Um, so on the side, uh, we've did about this text, we did related text, we did resources, and now we have the tools section. So I'm going to work through all of these to show you what they mean. So this is something new. If you were using the website before, when you wanted before, when you wanted to add a text to your sheet, you clicked on sheets and then you did some other stuff. Now we have, we've taken away a step for you and made it that much easier to add a text to your sheet. So here I have selected my text. I could select a range of text and I click add to sheet and it tells me what it is that I'm adding. And it shows me the, um, it will show me the last sheet I was working on. This is my Safari, not my account. It's our Safari education account. There are a ton of sheets. I could pick, like I could pick uh, Rachel's test sheet. That's where I try out different things. Um, so that's the sheet I'm adding to. I could click add to sheet and it would automatically add it to my sheet. I also could start a new sheet. If I named it here and press create, then it would create a new sheet. So this is just, um, this makes it faster, easier for you to add things to your sheet. Um, the next one is, um, this one we get a lot of questions about. We don't have time to do it on the 101. So I'm glad that you're here for the, uh, for the deep dive so you can, we can, we can jump into uh, dictionaries. So we have basically three dictionaries and there are different ways that you can um, use them. So I'm gonna show you a few of the ways. So if I have a text open and um, I'll, I'll do it here 
um, yeah, I'll do it here. So if I have something open, um, so I need to have my resource uh, panel open. I'm gonna double click on the word. So let's say I'd like this word. I'd like to find out what it means. I double click on it and it pops up in the dictionary. The thing you have to remember is you want the resource panel to be open when you do your double clicking. If you double click when it's closed, it, it will probably tell you that there is no definition for it. So you want your resource panel to be open and then you double click. And this comes from um, an online Tanakh uh, Bible uh, dictionary. So, um, and there you have all kinds of, of definitions. I'm gonna go to something in the Talmud because we have other dictionaries that are for that. So I'm gonna go to one of those. Um, the same thing though, you're gonna open it. You wanna do your double clicking when you have your resource panel open. So um, I'm just gonna click around. I hope I'm gonna come up with a definition. I'm gonna double click on a word and there it is. And I'll see if uh, there's a lot there. This is from the Jastro dictionary. Some of you might know that. This is also from Jastro and Jastro. And I'm hoping that we have another dictionary. Ah, yes. And down here, we have a definition from the Klein dictionary. Those are our two major dictionaries. So you have a lot of information here. So, um, so that is how, while you're reading the text, that is one way of, of uh, looking up in the dictionary. Another way you notice that you have a search, uh, a search bar. And in the search bar, you can type the word in Hebrew. You can use the digital uh, keyboard. If you can't type in Hebrew, you can click on this and it'll give you a keyboard that you can click on. Um, so I could put a word um, here. I'll put, uh, it says Hadagan. I'm going to put Dagan. And you'll see it has a drop down menu. And there it is. It's very small. I might want to make it bigger. Um, and then here I have, um, this is that, this is the dictionary that we saw for the Tanakh ones. This is Jastro, Jastro, and Klein. We've got them all on one, on one. That was a good word to pick. So, um, so that's another way. That you can um, that you can pick, uh, you can use the dictionary, or I could just click on dictionaries. Well, it has the last thing I did. I could do that. Another way I could do dictionaries is I could open the dictionary from my library page. It has reference. I click on reference, and then actually I have all of these dictionaries. I'm going to click on Jastro, and if I go to the table of contents of Jastro, I have. Uh, the alphabet, I could click on a letter and scroll. That would be perhaps if I don't know what to put in and I'm looking for something, I have this search bar um, at always. So that's another place. Notice here, we also have Hebrew or Aramaic abbreviations and we have a list of abbreviations. So we have a lot of resources for you. You could look and check out our resource, our reference page, and you can see all of the different books and play around with this to see. I'm not able to show you them all right now, uh, but that is the dictionaries. I wanna talk for a minute about dictionaries on mobile because this is where it's different. And I think this is the only example where it's actually different depending on which type of mobile device you have. If you're using iOS, so an iPhone or an iPad, if that's the app you're using, if you long press on the word and then highlight it, there's a pop-up at above it that says define, which you can press to open the definition for the word. If you're on Android, you cannot do that. So the only way on an Android phone or something is to not use the app, but to use your browser to go to www.safaria.org and, and then you'll get like to something like this. So again, everything on the website, you can do everything on the website on iOS, on an iPhone, iPad, you also can look up a word. And on Android, you can't do it on the app. You'd have to be on the mobile web. Okay, now I wanna show you something that is a new thing that I love. Um, so we're gonna go back to the Mishnah. Oh, let's do something different. Um, this is for Mishnah or Talmud. So you might want to, while you're studying, it's a nice habit to know, to learn about the rabbis that are mentioned in the, um, in the Mishnah or in the Talmud. So when I have the resource panel open, 
I, I hover over here, it says Beit Shammai. I could do this in Hebrew and I could do it in English. And you'll see there's a dotted line underneath. That means um, that we have that. I double click on it and I get what is Beit Shammai. Um, I'll do another one. I'll do one from English. Um, I could do Beit Hillel. Here's Rabbi Tarfon. You can see that Rabbi Tarfon has underlined. So I click on it. It tells me Rabbi Tarfon. It tells me when he lived. It tells me something a little bit about Rabbi Tarfon. Sometimes we do not have every rabbi. There are some that it's actually not known who the rabbi is. And so we don't have it. And then there are some because they don't all two could have the same name. And sometimes it's not clear which, which of the rabbis it is. And so sometimes it will say um, it's not clear. It could be this one or this one. But we have many, many, many of the rabbis. And um, it is really a great thing, a great habit to get into when you're studying to learn about who it is that's talking. Are two people from the same time period talking with each other? Um, is one reacting to something that, hap that was earlier than him? So, um, so this is really great. Uh, and I'm really, personally, I love having this on Safaria. Um, the next thing, I'm gonna go back to a Torah text. This time I'm going to go to, um, tell I did this all before because all my things are popping up. I wanna to go to the story of the golden calf. And here we've talked about that things are connected, that texts are connected. So if I have the golden calf and then I want commentary that's quoting this, it's gonna be connected. But in this case, I want to compare two things. I want them side by side, but they're not connected in the database because they're connected thematically. They're not connected by a reference. So we don't have those yet. Um, so. Let's say in the story of the golden calf, there's first this, the, the, this, the narrative of telling what happened. And then as it goes on, then Moses confronts his brother Aaron and he says, hey, what happened? And then Aaron uh, gives an answer. So sometimes I know when I'm teaching this, I like to put them side by side. What is, does, is what Aaron says, is it exactly true? Did he switch things? How did, how did he say it? So I wanna put them side by side, but they're not linked in the related text. So what I do is I go down to tools and I go to compare text. I click compare text and I get another library page. I can click Tanakh, I can click Exodus. It's gonna give it to me again. And I happen to know that what I want is verse 23. And I slide down to, I scroll down to 23. And now I have side by side, um, it says what the people said to Aaron. And this is what Aaron said they said to him, and I can continue, they each scroll separately, but I can continue comparing things next to each other. So that is on the side, that is compared text. Um, another thing that's very, very helpful, um, I can click on notes. This I can only use if I have an account and Safari accounts are free. Um, and there are a few things that you can only do if you are logged into your Safari account. One of them is make a source sheet. Another one of them is to write a note. So I might wanna write myself a note and I might, might wanna say here, whoops. I might wanna say, compare to Exodus 32, 23. So that every time I'm at the story of the golden calf, it will remind me, I click add note and it added the note. You can see that it has the note here and I see it um, where it says notes, it, I have a note. Um, so that's, that I can do. Another thing, this is a new, very new, um, a new uh, tool that we have, which is Chavruta. It's a great way for you and a friend anywhere in the world, in the same room or someplace else to learn together with a video connection. So I take, I find whatever it is, let's say we are going to study about the golden calf. I have it here. I've clicked it. I click on Chavruta and now I have a link which I'm gonna to send to my partner. I can send it in an email, I can send it in a text, I can WhatsApp it, um, and I'm gonna start the call. When I start the call, give it a second, it's a little slower because I'm also running Zoom. It's not usually this slow. Um, if it doesn't want to wake up and do it, I'll just describe it, but up oh, there it is. In a second, it'll be my, video up there I am, there's me up there, there's the text. 
And again, I have the link that I would send to my friend. When my friend puts that into the computer, um, then my friend pops up on the bottom. So the two of us can talk to each other, we can see each other, and we can learn together. And, and to get out of it, we just X out of it like that, just X on the top. Um, it's a really, really great resource, um, something you can learn with your grandchildren, you can learn with your friends. It's really great. Um, I'm gonna, I know I'm someplace else, but anyway, I'm going to keep going down the list. We have share. Let's say I, I'm using this text and I want to post it on Facebook or Twitter or send it in an email. I click on any of these from share on the side, or I also have the URL. I have the, the, the what I would put into the computer for, I could send this to somebody. I could WhatsApp it. Um, I don't know, I live in Israel, we WhatsApp everything. So, um, but however it is that you send things to people, you just copy it, it's selected already, you copy it, you send it, and they quickly can open um, to whatever it is that you want to tell them about. That is share. Feedback, um, if you'd like to talk to us, you'd like to tell us what you think, or you found a mistake, you found a typo, you found something, you found a bug, you go to feedback and you select which type, report an issue with the text. That would be a typo, um, something like that. You can request a translation. Again, we're not really gonna necessarily be able to right away translate it, um, but it is very good for us to know what it is people are interested in. Report a bug. Um, there'll be a form that you fill out um, that gives the engineers information and helps them to, um, it, first of all, it alerts them. It's very helpful to us. Many times we don't know that we have something, but when we hear from people, then we're like, okay, there's a problem and they're on it. Um, get help, that takes you to our help pages um, and request a feature. If there's something, if you have a suggestion, we would love to hear it. So you click on whatever, here's reporting an, an issue with the text, you describe the issue and you click submit. Very easy, we love to hear from you. You also can write us at hello at safaria.org. And the last one on tools are our advanced tools. And this is adding a translation and adding a connection. So um, you just click on them. It gives you the information of what to do. Um, I'm not gonna go further into those because I do wanna show you some great new texts that we have. And I do wanna stop for questions. So we're going to stop. And then I want to, I hope we'll have time to run through some really great new texts that we've put on Safaria that you might not have just found by yourself. Lauren, questions? Great. Just going through the list here. Great. Thank you. Do you know, uh, Rachel, while I'm going through the list, do you know if there is a plan or if we have Migulat Esther in uh, Audio Torah from Jofa, for example? Um, we don't, but if somebody knows of something that is in the public domain, um, you could write it to us um, either through the website like this or just hello at safaria.org. We'll look at it. I mean, Jofa would have to, if they have it, they would have to, uh, you know, want to want to make that a part of Safaria. But we, we don't. We just have Chumash, just the Torah. Great. Thank you. Um, some people had some clarification questions about Chebruta. You know, yes. what are, you know, is this can just for two people, Chavruta, more people? Yes. And, and do you have to be on Zoom for Chavruta, somebody wants to know? Oh, no, no, no. Actually, it would be better if you're not. That's why I couldn't do the whole thing. So you would not be on Zoom. You're not using Zoom. You're using our, our interface um, to see each other. It is just two people. Um, and there's no, so, need, no need for an app. You just put it in the URL and that's it. Is that right? Right. Actually, Lauren, he is the expert on... Uh, Lauren's the expert on Chavruta, so why don't you take this one? Oh, no, no, no. You answered the no, question. No, 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 that's, okay. Chavruta is great. Just get a URL, put it, in the, put it in your browser, press enter, return, and you will meet your Chavruta there. Yeah. Um, and every once in a while, we do have special events um, that we do like random ones, but this is just really great. You can do it yourself with the person that you want to learn with. Um, and you have the text and you have each other. It's really a great way to learn. And you don't need Zoom. You don't need uh, Google, Hang uh, Google Meet. You don't need anything else. You can do it all right on Safaria. 
Can uh, I show some text or you have more? Yeah, I just wanted to answer Alan's question. Alan, yes. Cabruta works. Um, I believe actually this is a question. I actually don't know the answer to. It. I'm pretty sure it only works in the browser, or does it work in the app too? Do you know, Rachel? Hmm. I'm not 100% sure. I think that maybe I have done it in the browser, but I'm not sure. You'd have to try it. Yeah, we try it. Definitely it. works in the browser, but um, try it. And then email us if you have any issues. Hello uh, at safari.org. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you have an issue, email us. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, you know, try it is always a good thing because you can't go wrong. You know, click around, try things out. And sorry, I don't have the answer. Um, I think it might be yes, but it also could be no. Okay, I'd like to show you some really great stuff, if you don't mind, and I will stay on after for additional questions. I, I certainly have time. I wanted to show you also, because it happened to be good that we have new, new texts here. So if you look up where my cursor is on the right, there's a circle with a five. And that means that there are five new notifications. Sometimes it might be um, somebody published sheets. I think that's what this is gonna be that somebody that I'm following publishes sheets. But when we add things to the library, it will also notify you up there. So if you see a number, when you're logged in, if you see a number up there, you click on it. Ah, yes, these are new sheets that have been published. So I follow, or this account follows them, but, and they've been publishing a lot of sheets. But if I go down further, I can see here are new texts. So a week and six days ago, we added this text and this text and Katona Passim and, all, and it tells you a little bit about it and it links right to it. So, um, so, so that is um, how you can find new texts. But I'm gonna point out a few of them that you might not have found on your own. Um, our newest text, which is so perfect for now, it's for the three weeks, which just began on Sunday, which I guess was yesterday. So um, this is in the Jewish thought section. If I click on Jewish thought and go down to the modern um, texts in the narrow places, daily inspiration for the three weeks. Um, and this is by Erica Brown um, and it's the whole book. It's only in English. If I go to the title page, I find out about Erica Brown, who she is. Um, and I have all of the, the chapters, all the days, every day there is a reading. So this is something you might be very interested in right now. It's in Jewish thought. Um, the, author is Erica Brown. Um, so the, another one, this is older, but I love this text. I don't know if anybody else um, actually reads this or, or knows about it, but when it first came on, I have to say that I spent the whole day reading it because I loved it. So responsa are letters to rabbis. Um, and historically, like you can see, we have all different time periods, but we have a very interesting text that is collected responsa in wartime. And this was a committee from the American army of an Orthodox conservative and reform rabbi who answered questions for the United States army and Navy um, that answered questions that would help chaplains because chaplains have to be chaplains for all religions. So help them to deal with their Jewish soldiers. And if you look in the table of contents, you can see some of the questions that they asked. And it is just fascinating and um, some of these texts, you could just, you know, if you have a little time, you can spend some time uh, learning something really new. Um, in the liturgy department, in the category of liturgy, we have several Sidurim. We hope to update our Sidurim in the future. Um, we have Haggadot and we have Haggadah commentaries. So we have a rabbi, Rabbi Mark Greenspan, who every year with his congregation for his Siyum at the end, before uh, Pesach, he would, he would translate a new commentary on the Passover Haggadah, and then he put them on Safaria. So they are very, very interesting, and they are there. I want to point out one more thing from the liturgy section, again, because it's timely. Um, besides that we have for Tisha B'Av coming up, we have the Book of Echa, we have Lamentations in Tanakh. We also, in the liturgy section, we also have Keynote, the special, um, the special, uh, poems that are said, um, and this is in English, but we do have it in Hebrew. And if you wanted to do it just in Hebrew, uh, you can do all of that. So we have that on Safaria for you as well. Um, in the Tanakh commentaries, we have, um, so if I go to Tanakh 
And then I scroll down to commentaries. Again, it, it goes in order of uh, time. So the earlier ones, later ones, and then modern ones. So we have a couple things here to point out. Um, Nechama Leibowitz, you can see is here. She really was the inventor of the source sheet. So we, her family has donated source sheets to us. Um, it's actually a collection, but we put them here. We've translated one for every Torah portion. So if you want just the English ones, you would click on English. And there, although the title is in Hebrew, the, you can see in English, we've tagged them the name of the Torah portion. So one of them in every, uh, for every Parsha is, for every Torah portion, one of them is um, translated. But um, uh, how did I get, let me get back to where I was before. Um, but also you could, you can go to, um, they, this is the filter, you can, like there's 30 of them for Yitro and there's, there's basically 29 or 30 of every Torah portion, but only one is fully translated into English. Now the other ones, if the text is, it has an English translation, you'd be able to view it, but her writings not. Also in the modern commentary, we have um, Dr. Aviva Zornberg's book, Moses, A Human Life. This is an English book. We have the entire book. And our translator, Rav Francis Nataf, has written uh, a book or a series of books called Redeeming Relevance. And these are also in English and also our um, Bible, uh, their Torah commentaries. So you can read complete English works um, on there. I want to point out not a, not a esoteric work, but I want to point out um, in halakha, in Jewish law. So I, I didn't mention it now, but you know from the other webinars that if it's in black, if it's written in black, we have a full translation. If it's in gray, we do not have a full translation. But I want to show you, point it out here on Mishnah Torah, which is gray. If I click on it, you'll see that actually whole sections have been translated. So even though the whole work is not translated, sometimes you want to click on it anyway, because maybe there are parts. So each of these books of, of the Mishnah Torah, like the repentance, is totally translated. So that's just something to know. And the last one, um, and then I will stay on for as many questions as you'd like, but the last one that I want to point out to you is another one of our newer books. It's a Talmud commentary. It's a book in English also. So again, you go down to all of the things connected to the Talmud, um, different commentaries, modern commentaries. We have um, Dr. Judith Hauptman's book, Rereading the Rabbis, A Woman's Voice. And we have the complete book um, on, on Safaria. So, uh, so that is what we have time for for today. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a minute um, so that I can see all of you. And um, I wanna also mention that Safaria is a nonprofit and we have many ways to support us, including being a sustainer with a monthly donation, um, a one-time donor. We have a sponsoring a day of learning. You might've seen on the library page uh, today, we do have our learning is sponsored. People do it to honor somebody in memory of someone's yard site, all kinds of things. Um, and also I want to, I will stay on for questions, but I wanna remind you that you always can ask questions um, by, writing us at um, hello at safaria.org. Also, I'm gonna share my screen again because I forgot to show you this, but also um, the profile button in the top right has changed a little bit. When I click on it to go to my profile, which is where I find my sheets, I click profile. But if I click help, we have a, uh, the help center, which has a series of sheets um, that might answer some of your questions as well. So thank you all of you who spent this last hour with us. Um, Lauren and I are happy to stay and answer more questions or you may write us questions and you'll receive an email, I imagine tomorrow with the recording and um, the sheet uh, attached to this sheet that we gave you. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, Lauren, questions. I think the only other question that was remaining and a couple of people seem to still be curious about Chavruta was just, if you could just, I mean, and by the way, folks, you know, as, as Rachel might've mentioned or mentioned, uh, you'll get a recording of this at the end um, by email, not tonight, but, but in the very near future. 
Um, so you can recheck, you know, retrace all of our steps. But Rachel, if you could just share, show us one more time, how do we start uh, and activate the Chavruta feature? Sure, sure. And I'm actually looking now. I'm kind of looking through the uh, through some of the questions. I see someone asked about transliteration, and we do not yet have have that. Um, okay. So I'm gonna open up a text. It doesn't matter what text you open. So I'm just gonna open anything. And um, so I'm gonna to click to open up the resource panel and then I'm gonna simply click on Chavruta. And I'm going to, and what I would do um, is, well, I mean, you have two choices. You can either right now, I could just, uh, you see how I've highlighted um, the URL, it, it makes a special URL for this Chavruta session. And I would copy it and I could send it to somebody or I could just start the call. Uh, when I start the call, again, this is taking a little longer because, oh, then not so bad because I'm on Zoom. So there I am. And again, I have the URL. I'm just copying the URL and sending it to my Chavruta, to my partner. And the partner I mean, I guess, I don't know. I wonder if I could do this to myself. Let's just see what happens. Well, try. Rachel, you could try, you could try inviting me or, or somebody I else. I could, but I closed my Slack. Oh, no. Oh, you could put it in the chat and I'll click it. Oh, I could put it in the chat. That would probably be the best way to do this. But then, I, but then I must leave for family dinner, but I know you're, oh, you're around for a little bit. I don't want you to miss family dinner. I'm trying to find, trying to find it. Ah, here we, I'm trying. Oh, no. <laughs> The stress, it's getting to me. Wait, how come I can't find my chat? Oh, here we go. I don't know. Wait, oh, because I have to stop my share. Oh, there we go, okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put it in the chat. I'm gonna put it for everyone, but please only Lauren, please, um, you'll be the only one that does it. Otherwise, we're gonna break the whole system. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. And there, and uh, Rachel, there was one more question that came in. If you want to answer it, as sure. uh, as let me uh, let me join yeah. you on let me join you on here, and yeah. people can watch. Can you tell me the question? Yes, the question was: uh, Can you search if you are on a particular text? If you're on a if you're on a particular text, can you search and can you search for like topics on that particular text through the search bar? Okay. Well, see now you can see there's Lauren and there's me. And we could learn together, which would be awesome. Um, and it's being a little goofy because of the Zoom factor. And um, so I'm going to close it. But that's what it would look like. So um, yeah. So so the question is, while I'm, and I, you, I bet you'd like to see something besides this. Um, OK. Here, Rachel, I'll, I'll just repeat the question uh, with the exact wording. So it's when I'm, when I'm on a text. And I want to search for something like a repeating word on that particular page. It seems that when I go to the search bar, it doesn't search on that page, but all of Safari. Right. Okay. So two, two things. What I would do if I'm on this page and I want to search for something, I would use my computer's search. I would do in my case control F and I would put the word that I want to search. And let's say I'm just looking at what's here. And there I, I have it. I don't know if there's another one, um, but if it was, it would, no, there's only one. But I guess since I'm talking about Avram, let me put Avram in, and then you would see that it would, so I could do it like that if I wanted to, uh, that's what I would do. But you are correct that if I were to put it here, I'm gonna put, now I'm gonna put Avram here. And um, I would go down to the bottom because I'm looking for, I want to see it every place in the Tanakh. And you see there's like a ton of them. And so what I would do then is I would filter and I click filter. And let's say I want to know only in, uh, well, let's see, I only want one answer. So I only want in Nehemia. I click the book of Nehemia. And now I have the one place where it is. So um, if I want to stay in that sheet, I would use my, the the search uh, feature of my computer. If I want to find any place in the library, I would put it in the search bar, go down to the bottom where it's in parent in uh, quotation marks, and then I would filter, and I can unfilter. It'll go back to all of mine in Talmud. There's 86 of them. 
I click it, it selects all of them. I unclick, they're still there. Now I can say I want Megillah, I want Yivamot, and then it gives me just those. Okay, and we want Lauren to get to his dinner. If anybody does want to stay on, um, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, but I think if we have them all, then we can say goodnight. Okay, well, thank you all.